This month here at the Church of the Larger Fellowship, we've been exploring the theme of quest, or life's journey. We've thought about different kinds of quests, the unexpected journeys that life has taken us on, even the kind of faith that we need for the toughest parts of our lives, the tools we need to develop along the way. Each of us has our own life to live, and we will each experience our own quests along the way, but there is one part of our journeys that we will all share, that all living things will share, and that is the end of life. One day, some time from now, we will each die, and we will make the journey into whatever it is that comes after this life. And as Lynn told us in the story of the mustard seed, we will all experience in one way or another the deaths of family and friends. The toughest experience I've had so far with death in my own life was when I was a teenager and my father's father died. It's hard enough when someone dies, but it was even harder this time for me because my grandfather had taken his own life and in a very violent way. When I returned to school after a few days of grieving with my family, a good friend of mine stopped me in the hallway between classes and told me how sorry she was that my grandfather had died. But then she told me how sorry she was that he was in hell. Now, I had been raised in a liberal religious home, raised to believe that God's other name was love, and so this thought had never even occurred to me before. But I had also been taught in Sunday school to have a deep respect for all religions and to recognize that they all bear truth. And so I wondered, what if she was right? What if I've been wrong all this time. What if my grandfather really is in hell? Well, it wasn't long after that that I found myself in conversation with my minister. We were talking about faith in the power of good over evil, in the power of love. And so I asked my minister, do you really think that love is more powerful than anything else? Even more powerful than all of the bad things that humans do? And he said yes. He had faith that love ultimately wins in all things. And it was then that I began to have hope. You see, without knowing it, I had begun to build up my grandfather's suicide as something that was beyond redeeming. But talking with my minister helped me to realize that this kind of thinking assumes that love or God is powerless against fear and selfishness and violence. I began to understand at a deeper level that even though I may not always be in a position to perceive it, love is deeper and wider and bigger and greater than anything else. And I realized that whatever it is that comes after this life, wherever my grandfather was, he was in the midst of love. Too often in our world, speaking about death carries a stigma, especially if a person's death happens in a violent way. After my friend's comment, I didn't feel comfortable talking about my grandfather. I didn't even feel comfortable thinking about him myself. It felt as if he had taken all of our memories, all of the good things we had shared with him when he took his life. But once my minister helped me to remember my faith in love, in redeeming love, I realized that no one act, even a final act, was greater than the love that my grandfather and I had shared. I think the thing that I liked best about Lynn's story 
is the saving power that remembering had for the grieving mother. She began to heal once she had been able to remember her son with other people. And I think that's why days like All Saints Day and All Souls Day and the Days of the Dead are so poignant. When we remember the people we have loved, they go from being just memories to being parts of our lives, parts of the living, the ongoing world. It's in this spirit that I invite you to remember those whom you've loved, those who have made the journey from this life into what's next. And I invite you to share the ways that you still feel them with you today, the ways that they continue to touch your life and shape the person you are today.